Hi everyone, welcome to the Time Farm and Sporting Live Saturday Racing Preview. It's another good card on the Rolly Mile at Newmarket, headlined by the Dali Dewhurst Stakes. I'm Ben Linfoot and I've got Matt Brocklebank from Sporting Life and Kieran Clark from Time Farm to discuss the action. Matt, we're at Newmarket again. Class, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's looking good ground. We've got good racing, looking forward to it. Yeah, really good time of year. Superb race, obviously, the Dewhurst, a champions often born in this race really i know obviously we've had a fair chunk of the two-year-old season already but this is often the crowning moment for uh, a prospective classic horse nine horses i think have done the the dewhurst 2000 guineas double uh, and there'll be a couple in here with pretensions of that prize next spring as well so yeah a really good clash yeah, love the Jewers. Looking forward to it. Often crowned the champion juvenile. And that's the first race we're going to look at. We're going to look at the Says as well. And we'll talk about best bets at the end of the show. But the Daly Jewers Stakes, three o'clock Newmarket, is where we're going to start, Kieran. And we're going to get the time form ratings on screen to help us out. And we will see that Shadow of Light for Charlie Appleby is time form top rated on 131. He is, yeah. So that's adjusted ratings. Um, that comes from his devastatingly impressive win in the middle part just a couple of weeks ago, just ahead of the line of winter, who has actually had his rating uh, pushed up a little bit since he York. Doctored. Yeah, he's gone up four pounds. So he, he would have... on the back of collateral form then? Yeah, so he beat uh, Wimbledon Hawkeye, came out and won the Royal Lodge. Uh, the Waco kid, or Waco kid, uh, he came out and won the Somerville Tattersall Stakes as well. So the form's rock solid. The first three pulled clear and the time figure backs it up. So we've, um, we've put him a... A little bit higher and that actually happened before shadow of light uh ran at newmarket and they got it truth good winner of the superlative godolphin of farm that race of late and then come on to try and win this race didn't it if trail did a double can't remember if he did um did, yeah. yeah and then um obviously Aiden's running another couple in there as well it might not be good enough but it makes it interesting from a tactical angle which we'll talk about in a bit Okay, well, we've got three video clues to pour over, and the first one is Shadow of Light. Winning in the middle park at Newmarket a couple of weeks ago. He's there in the Godolphin blue, Kieran, and he does this very nicely from a good yardstick in Whistle Jacket in second. He is a good yardstick. Um, I won't say he's a top, top two-year-old, though. I know he won the Marnie, but he's been beaten a couple of times. It's hard not to be impressed, though, with... With Shadow of Light, he, um, he arrived in the gym crack and beat and came running on really strongly at the end. And it's sort of what he does here between the two of the one where he, he goes past Whistle Jacket and then as soon as William Buick um, asks him to quicken, he, sh he shoots clear. I think it was four lengths, the winning margin in the end. Now, the ground will be a bit quicker tomorrow. It was soft um, on this occasion. but well, The time form recorded it good to soft. This good to day. soft, yeah. I think it will probably be talking about similar ground. He was really impressive the way he quickens clear. Pretty quick turnaround, only only two weeks ago. Um, I can't remember many have tried the... Um, Has been done, hasn't it? Yeah. US Navy flag, I think. In Dream had tried it, didn't he, once upon a time. But, um, yeah, it, I'm not sure how good that middle part was, even though he was quite a wide margin winner. Um, I think I'm happy to take him on. I don't even know if Buick's on the right one, which might be controversial, but I think it could be a case for the other one. But I suppose the one we have to talk about is, is the line and winter map. And Matt Brocklebank is going to do just that. We've got a video clip of the line in winter, winning the Aikham States at York um, in August. And mm. this was an impressive performance, Matt. We've already discussed that the, the form has worked out so well, but you were quite taken with this. I was, and I was taken by his debut performance as well, which was quite extraordinary, really, um, when he looked kind of outpaced and a bit green and gawky. And then he completely sprouted wings to win at the Curra first time out of a seven furlongs. That was in a traditionally strong maiden and then interesting that they pitched him in here into the Acom stakes the big question mark here was really quite quick ground obviously mm, a, a sharp track, track as well yeah speed track at york quick ground uh and sticking at seven furlongs because everything about his pedigree suggests he's going to be a much better horse over further he's by see the stars he's out of a, a dam who was placed at a mile and a half as well so this was a really impressive performance um he's straightforward isn't he, he ryan moore obviously looked to use that Stamina, which we suspect he probably does have and clearly does have here uh, to put this race to bed. Um, he dictated matters. The horse just really was there for him throughout yeah. that whole race. That's what I loved. He just looks professional. Uh, you know, a horse that you fully expect to be better at three. He is a, he is a very um, mature horse, I think, for a two-year-old. Um, to see him doing this over seven furlongs really is against his pedigree. So he is extraordinary, I think. I think he's another unusual one for... Yeah, the only uh, see the stars again. in Valley Doyle. 
yeah, the only see the stars at the minute. Yeah, um, as you said, the form looks really good. He's the complete package. Just fascinating, really, that we've seen there prior um, a four length winner of a Group One going in another Group One, and he's not favourite because of this horse. Really, does look a bit special. Yeah, um, he smashed the track record at York, but the wind was behind him for the first sort of three furlongs until the turn into the bend, but. Um, like yeah. I said, the form's really strong. That's as well. it. He's done it both ways as well, hasn't he? Yeah. Like uh, the Curra first time out, a little, you know, he was educated on the job and he came there and, and was too good. He was too classy. Um, uh, and not many O'Brien horses, even the really best ones, win like that on debut first time out. And then he's gone and proved it there in, in a deep edition of the Acom. You know, let's not, that wasn't a normal Acom. That no, was that was. Race. And I think the race conditions changed, which made it an even deeper race. Do we know why he didn't run in the Goffs Million? Because after I was at York and that was all the talk about that's where I'll go next. Um, have they just chosen to come here instead rather than a setback? Or? Yeah, I don't think there was any sort of setback cool. from my reading of it. Okay. Well, again, that's another dynamic to this race. Um, all three of these star horses in here have kind of had a change of tack in their campaign, haven't they? Obviously, this one was down to originally running the, in the Goffs Million, then... Uh, you know, the uh, Appleby horse backing up Shadow of Light from mm. just the other week in the middle part. Because straight afterwards, he said, this is a Commonwealth Cup horse, probably yeah. a sprinter. Mm. And then obviously, um, Ancient Truth as well, who was going to run potentially in the national stakes of the Curra. So he skipped that and he's trying to do exactly what City of Troy did. Well, let's talk about Ancient Truth because he's another facet fascinating contender even. Uh, won the superlative stakes at Newmarket on the July course. That's the last time we saw him. Yeah. And we're going to see him now in action. Yeah, it was really impressive, I thought. Um, beat Seagulls 11, who came out and finished second in the National Stakes. I think he reopposes tomorrow. I think he might be a, might be better at six, uh, Seagulls 11. But uh, that's Wimbledon Hawkeye. We saw finishing third in the Acom. That's him just getting a bit outpaced out the back. And I really liked what Ancient Truth... No, you can't do Ancient Wisdom then. Um, Ancient Truth did between sort of the three and the two. So you see here the pace just starts to quicken. And he quite easily gets to the front. Now, he does hang left once he gets to the front. He was still a bit green that day. But at the time, I thought this was potentially the best two-year-old we'd seen so far. City of Troy won this race last year. Came on to win the Dewhurst without running between. Now, Wimbledon Hawkeye's a more improved sort than when, um, when he ran here. But he still beats him convincingly. And I really liked what he did at the finish. He's not all out there. He's quickening away again at the line. And I think he's the forgotten horse. He's 4-1 to one now. I think if that run was a month ago rather than three months ago, it'd be five to two, two it's to amazing. one. When you, when you watch that back, you yeah. think at the time that he's going to go into a duos, not race again, and be third favourite. You yeah, think, yeah. what on earth's happened? But, it, but it, things have just gone a bit cold about him, haven't they? Mm. You know, like, you know, obviously William Buick doesn't ride him. That's quite... I do think there might be a bit of a... Re how, can you really jump off a middle part winner that's won by four lengths? No, exactly Probably that. Probably not. It's but a recency thing. It is, yeah, but... He's, he's more of a stronger sort. I think uh, going off uh, descriptions, we call uh, the f uh, second favourite that William Buick's on, we called him sturdy, which means he's small, not, you know, hasn't got a great deal of strength to him, whereas we call um, Ancient Truth good tops, uh, good quartered actually, so he's got a bit of size and strength to him. And I do think he's a forgotten horse, but tactically it will be quite interesting as well. Well, let's chat tactics because it could be interesting. Only six runners in the duos. So we'll get the pace map on screen to to try and help us out. How do you think this might pan out? I mean, Rock of Kasha looks the obvious, perhaps, front runner if Ballydale wants to make this a test for the line in winter. I think Moore might make it, Scoop. We, I do. You, you know, you used last year's race as a bit of a mould. Right, um, okay. City of Troy bounced out and made the running. He, he'll, ha he'll have to set decent fractions on the line in winter. He will know fine well that Shadow of Light will be stalking and William Buick will hope to pounce late, use yeah. that speed, late doors, and try and pick him off now. I think he'll try and run the finish out of him. That's exactly what's going to have to happen. Um, and you think there's a potential there for Shadow of Light to use his six furlong pace and, and use a key weapon against the line of winter, who we know is, is bred for further? Yep. Suppose it there, is, there is a case. I suppose it depends if he can quicken into a pace that he's already flat out, as opposed to... If there went no pace, it would probably suit him over the yeah. line in winter. Who have didn't really go, go that quick in the middle part, did they? No. Thinking about it. No. no, Ryan Moore knows he's on a, a mile or and beyond horse. He he has to go out and set the fractions to suit his horse. Mm. And he, he doesn't get like it wrong. Like you say, exactly he like he did last year. Often, does he? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a fascinating yeah, it duo. Let's sum it up. I think I know which way you two are going, but just confirm your selections. Well, yeah, you at, the, at the price is ancient truth for me, but if he did shorten up... Um, I'd probably know about it, but at 4-1, I'm happy to take a chance on him. 
yeah, I can't be against the line win, so I find it really hard to pick holes in him. But you, with Shadow of Light at the prices? I thought Shadow of Light at 3-1 to one might be the answer in the race. I was impressed with him in the middle park. I did think that that speed might be a crucial weapon on Saturday. Um, I took the line in winter on in the Acom as well and trying to get a speed horse to beat him. I think he's a lovely prospect. I think he's going to be fantastic over 10 furlongs mm. next season. But I just That's the thought, thing, he's not actually... You, want, you don't think of him as a Guinness horse... Even if he wins the Jewish, you're already thinking 10 furlongs yeah. along half of him, yeah. But it might be a race I just sit back and watch and enjoy, to be honest, because it's a cracking Plenty Jewish. Plenty of them tomorrow. Yeah, there is. And one of them is the Godolphin, Club Godolphin Cesarovich Handicap at 3.40. It's not a 34-runner race, gents, but it's a 25-runner race. Half of them are training the island. It's a good puzzle. Uh, let's... Prize, prize money, that, that's the reason why, Scoop. Yeah. 90 grand to the winner this year, and I think when lost someone, it was over 300,000. And what was the Irish says? 600,000, something something along those lines. Um, I think that's why there's, there's not a full field. Certainly one of the reasons we haven't got a full field, but we have got 25. We're not going to go through all of them, but we've got a couple of video clues. First one, Jakovic Cavern, time form top rated, Matt, um, for Emmett Mullins. Mm. Uh, Last year's winning trainer. It's got a great chance, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, this he is. is. This is ex Mick Shannon. Uh, he's got, actually got Haley Turner in to do her minimum weight on this. Eight, eight stone two, it's crept in. I mean, it's hard to escape the idea that this might be a well handicapped horse. He was progressive uh, up to a mile and six for Just Mick Shannon. Pick him out there, Matt. So way back there in, in the, the orange, orange silks. Yeah. Uh, he was held up off what looked a bit of a crawl. And Bustleton, who sat in about third or fourth there now, gets, uh, well, was in a a more favourable position in the run as they turn for home, and he's still sort of pulling for his head, this Jakovic Cavern. Um, now, my question with him is that when he actually gets there, does he go through with it quite as you'd like to see? I didn't like his head carriage. Horse? No, he just... This is a good video to watch this, because as he, as he gets there, you think he's, he's almost certain to win now. Um, but obviously, Bustleton's a classic. Just to you, there, his head's in here. He, mm. he just goes a little bit, doesn't he? Has a little look... Um, now he could be too well handicapped, you know. He, he's. Um, I got him beat at Retker a couple of years ago for Mark in the seventies. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was a very encouraging run. That was at Galway, and he wasn't mm. missed in the market. I think he was about eight to one into eleven to four favourite that day. This is one we've spoke recently, just the other week in the Cambridgeshire and already this season. Em Emmett Mullins horse that we were not sure about. I think this will go off quite a sharp price this. Yeah, time. Do you think they're over bet now because of it comes with all oh, Emmett sent it over. This must be. Trying for its life. Well, they're certainly not under, but are they? I mean, no. <laughs> you often see it, don't you? Straight away, top of the market. Oh, it's, it's been found already, mm, yeah. sort of thing. Well, the Shunter won it last year, didn't it? 14s. Yeah. Um, you would imagine this will be going hurdling, won't you, in, in the winter? Oh, yeah. yeah. They're going to try and win a nice That's another prize. thing to take into account, isn't it? Which one... Which one? He's getting that balance of well handicapped for the Sairs, but also which one's fit with a hurdling campaign in mind and plenty of things to ponder. Let's have a look at the favourite, Sea of Sands. Uh, KC for, for Willie Mullins. He is seen here winning at Listowel. Yeah, Germany import. Could be thrown in. Could be, yeah. This was his only run for Willie so far. It was a... And this was on the back hurdle. of a huge absence. It was, yeah. And he's like I say, he's come from Germany. I think any of us could have rode him this day, to be fair. He, he didn't um, jump great, but he's, he's won with stacks in hands. Now, he's got a time form adjusted rating of 119 plus, but it is a, it is a case of... Who knows? And he's he's found his way it to really the front. Really is, isn't it? I he's mean. found his way to the front on who trains him. You've got to respect Willie in this. He's won it three or four times in recent years, hasn't he? With uh, Stratum and Great White Shark and Low Sun. And I mean, he's absolutely hacked up here. It's just a case of will he stay, and how good is he? And we don't know. And for a horse that is uh, a horse that is nine to two already, you kind of you kind of guessing a bit. But it, it's Willie Mullins in one of these major handicaps. He, you know, you take him on at your Bill peril. Buick. Bill Buick booked as well. Yeah, in a uh, great record for him, especially when... Uh, what's happened to Bellocchio after he won at Royal Ascot? Yeah. He struck me as a type for this sort of race, but... Um, he would be hurdling as, as another one. Yeah. I mean, he'll have every chance. I couldn't put you off him, but from looking at it in the form book, I've, I've, I've no idea how he's, how he's going to run, so... Um, I thought, uh, is it Nadawi? Gordon Elliott's might run Elliot, well at a price. Yeah, yeah. He's booked Jamie Spencer now. Obviously, they've won plenty of big races together in the past. Um, and he was second in the Galway hurdle when last seen behind the Berg ring. And he ran all right at Royal Ascot. I didn't think the uh, the tracksuit did not well. I think he's quite a strong galloping type. 
who will be really well suited by this test. Now, Jamie's probably going to drop him out and, and come with a come with a late run. He's about 14 to 1 with enhanced place terms on offer. I thought he had a squeak. Uh, he's only a four-year-old and uh, Pied Piper went close in this last year for Gordon and I, I thought he could um, he could potentially be running on from the back. But this is this is probably not the strongest this is our riches and I found it quite tricky. But the man on my left probably found one at a price of him at... Well, if you've got a set selection... Or do we have to wait till four o'clock? Well, if you can't beat the Irish, we're very much all <laughs> going to join them, aren't we? Because I'm actually with Dawn Rising in this. Okay, uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. I really fancied him at Royal Ascot. I was a bit disappointed, but he could have been laid out for this. Yeah, so that was... Uh, Royal Ascot, he ran in the Queen Alexandra <coughs> again, didn't he? Yeah. Um, that was a race that he'd won the previous year, and he'd won it that year under a brilliant ride from Ryan Moore, and I'm just not completely convinced he wants two miles five furlongs to be honest i know he's a strong state was he in the jack of coven race <clears throat> rising? no he's not run since um well he he, he ran in the irish cesarevich ah that's what i'm thinking yeah, of. yeah he ran sorry. in fact that he's only ever run in two handicaps in his life he ran in the irish cesarevich last season and he was unlucky he was beaten half a length in third after it bucketed with rain and he wants a sound surface mm. Um, and he, he, I genuinely think he should have won that day. And then he ran in it again. He, he came back, but it was on the back of a layoff because he hadn't run since June. Means to an end, and he, yeah. Yeah, and that race, um, the Iris Zarevich just the other week, uh, obviously won by the Euphrates, the three-year-old who dominated and dictated and was well handicapped. Now, Dawn Rising was an eye-catching run, uh, staying on from the back of the field. Uh, he was, was on it tomorrow? He was fifth in the end. Tom Markand comes okay. in for the ride. I think trying, trying conditions in his favour. Look, like he's not one of these with a stone in hand. And if Emma and Willie's horses are in that mould, then then he, he might struggle to win. But I think he'll run a really solid race. And he's a classy stay. He ran behind Kiprios a couple of times earlier this season. Yeah. Uh, I think this has been a target this time around with the Irish race as a, as a, a nice tee-up. I suppose we best mention Queenstown if we talk about Kiprios. It was all the rage in the Eber. Well, that's right. I mean, finished second. Blame the ground. And a few times earlier in the season. Didn't yeah. Uh, it was very fast, wasn't it? Very fast ground at York. It won't, won't have as much um, stinging it on Saturday. And I won't be surprised if he uh, bounced back. But... Um, yeah, you've, you've quite quite talked me into Dawn Rising now. I might have to back that. I think he's Darwin. solid. If you are getting well, extra... He ran well How many places Irish can we get? Running on. Can we get yeah. seven places? Yeah, I would imagine there'll be at least six. Yeah. Okay. That's the says done and dusted. Um, just before we go, gents, have you got a best bet for the weekend? In have, a nutshell. Yeah. 30 seconds. Um, again, I'm going for these kind of solid horses that are going to run the races in handicaps. Dual identity, I thought, has a really solid chance um, at York. It's mm. double-figure price. Loves the track. Uh, 10, 12 to 1. Yeah, it really does like the track. I think a, a, a repeat run of that um, penultimate effort um, when second to his owner mate. Uh, Might even be stable, mate. I can't yeah. Remember. Sabuska? Yeah. yeah. Second to Zabuska, two starts ago. That, a repeat of that will probably suffice. He's since running the Cambridge show, he ran on the wrong side of the track and he was actually second in his small group there. So I think he's in, still in good form. That's in the 205, the 10 falling handicap. Dual identity for Matt. Kieran, have you got one? I like one in the Zetlands. I think this has become a stronger race since it got moved from the back end of the season to Champions Weekend. And tonight, Ben, I'm going to tip you a winner because I really like stars in their eyes. Um, Didn't see that coming. He was, uh, he was trained by... Uh, Matthew Rafe, Kelly? Uh, Rafe Beckett, actually, oh. yeah. yeah. Um, bumped into Fields of Gold on debut. Won really nicely at Leicester last time. Saw it out really strongly. I think this trip is bound to suit. He's up three furlongs in trip. But I think he's uh, he's found his way to wars ahead of the betting, but I still think he's been underestimated a little bit. So... Stars in their eyes on a Saturday. We're going back 20 years there, aren't we? Who would, who would you have been if you were on their scoop? Oh, Roy Orbison. Roy Orbison. Every day of the week. And, and it is over. <laughs> it really is. Okay, thank you, gents. Enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Good luck if you're having a bet in the Cesar Rich, etc. this weekend. And we'll see you again next week. <laughs>